My next guest is a very talented artist who's dropping a brand new album very soon. It is Lex Stacy. Lex, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. I'm excited. Absolutely. We have a lot to talk about. But first, how are you? How has this last year been? Everybody's been talking about the one year anniversary of quarantine. Uh, it's been interesting. I mean, yeah, like the past year, I'm assuming for everyone has been like weird and tough to navigate. But uh, I like recently moved back to L.A. and it's been I think it's been a, it's been something that's been brewing for a while. Like I've been planning my move back here since like pre-COVID. And then once COVID hit, I was like, yeah, obviously like trying to navigate that and like just stayed at my parents' house for a while. And over time, I was like, it, I, I might as well like I was going crazy at home. So I needed to get out. And so I'm finally back out here and it feels good. Like finally get, getting back in the rhythm of like working on it out here. And uh, yeah, because prior to that, all the times I would be out in LA would be like crashing on couches, like every day I'd be in the studio, but like super exhausted because I'd be sleeping in an area that's like not exactly my bed. And so it's been, yeah, it's been an interesting just past year in general, but 2021 is off to a great start. When I hear about artists' journey, they start as songwriters and they eventually find their voice and they become their own artist or that was always the goal. They just need to get their foot in the door. You've been in production for quite some time. You did a lot of production work with your buddy Gene Dawson on Bad Sports. Was that a stepping stone situation? Did you have something kind of mapped out in your head in terms of how you wanted to tackle the production side and then grow as an artist individually? Yeah, I mean, the, the production stuff with Gene just kind of happened naturally. Like, we were like we were friends in high school we didn't go to the same high school but we had a lot of mutual friends that kind of uh introduced us through like just the, the music kind of sphere in san diego and i think i was a sophomore when i met him and uh like immediately after high school like we became roommates and uh in university and so the production stuff or like bad sports, like most of it, like maybe 90% of it was recorded in a dorm room, like getting noise complaints consistently and like uh, another like period of like having to balance things, like having to balance schoolwork. And then also as soon as I'm done with schoolwork, we would just like pull all nighters and work on bad sports. During that time, I wasn't really branching out in a way that I was like, oh, let me like, if you need beats, hit me up type of thing. I was kind of just, you know, naturally working on music with my best friend and then naturally producing my own stuff. It's fun doing production while also being my own artist because I get to do a lot of things that like I wouldn't normally do for my own stuff. And so, yeah. So with regards yeah. to your musical journey, you obviously have all these abilities and skills and you're very good at it. You went to college for, a, for something. And, and what was that something? What was, was that a plan B or was it music? Yeah, uh, I guess it was a plan B. So I was going to college for psychology and it was a bit of a, it's just a compromise with my family, like being in a, a Filipino household, like there's certain uh, things that are requirements like that my parents had for me. And it was like going to college, of course. And then like, you know, they, they, they're still, they still think I'm, um, you know, planning on going to grad school and going into like something within the medical field. But yeah, that was, that was kind of, I mean, I enjoyed psychology, like men mental health is like also like a passion of mine, if that makes sense. And so while it was a plan B and it's not something that I, I necessarily want to commit to, like, obviously I want to commit to music and music is like my main priority psychology was still something that like I'm still fairly passionate about. And something that could probably help you with actual songwriting as well because of the fact that mental health is such at the forefront right now and yeah. how people are dealing with it and then how it applies to what you're going through and how you sort out your feelings could translate into lyrics, don't you think? Yeah, a lot of my, so the album that I have coming out this year, I feel like probably couldn't have been 
like what it is if I if I wasn't studying psychology. So like my last year in a in university, I was doing a lot of like classes and research in like multicultural psychology and learning about things like colorism and like how it like uh affects an individual and like how it has like come about and like in, in ways that's like internalized colorism or internalized like hatred and stuff and so because I was in these classes I began to like think of my heritage and like process certain like traumas that I wouldn't have normally processed if like I wasn't in these classes and so yeah like, like this album it touches on colorism and like, like experiences in, in that realm and like pretty much the experience of being uh, a, a first gen Filipino American. I can totally relate to what you are referring to being a first generation Filipino and the expectations of your parents. I'm fifth generation and my parents still had those expectations for me. And you know, I know the whole thing, medical, lawyer, uh, engineering, you got to pick one of those three fields to be able to make something of yourself for, for them to be proud. But your parents are very musical. They have some uh, talent as well, from what I understand. So how, how does that all intersect with their expectations and also having this passion for music? The funny thing is, is like, I clown my dad all the time because he kind of like forced me into like learning how to play piano and learning how to play the guitar. And then like fast forward, like 15 years later, he's like telling me not to, <laughs> not to like pursue music, like as my, as my main thing. And so I clown him all the time. Cause I'm like, it's kind of, it's kind of your fault that, uh, you know, you got me into music and now you're trying to trying to tell me that it should be like my like side passion. But I mean, it's all out of love. Like they, they always encourage me and both my parents, like grew up playing the guitar and singing like my my grandma on my dad's side was a singer as well and then my my uh, uncle in the philippines he had this like like folky garage band and uh yeah so i have a very musically inclined family like they all have had have had like at one point like some sort of uh like goal of being a musician in some way but uh none of my like family has ever like fully pursued that and so that's also one thing that I think about sometimes from where uh like when I think about just like me in music like I, I think about trying to be the one in my family that finally like breaks past the barrier and you know makes music something very like feasible and tangible which is a lot better than just sitting in the living room uh, with Magic Sing and mm -hmm. <laughs> doing doing karaoke. Yeah, yeah, my parents love karaoke. Every yeah, every time I'm at my house, at my parents' house, they at one point they're singing karaoke. It's <laughs> your latest single, Tulugna, is one that you're singing in your native tongue for at least a portion of in Tagalog, and something you haven't done before. What was the thought process behind that one? Yeah, I think just having this album that I uh, plan on putting out this year, like during the writing process, since I became so inclined to like talking about my experiences as like a Filipino American and talk about the kind of things that I grew up around and experienced, pretty much like I grew up hearing a lot of like folk song, like Filipino folk songs that my like dad would both like play, like just play out loud, but also like sing on his own. I think Tulag Na is like the first song that I feel like my parents would actually be very proud of, or at least like people within like my culture could be like very proud of. Like a lot of the songs that I put out prior to that don't really uh, like emphasize anything about my culture. Like they're kind of just like songs that were made and uh, without the lens of being a Filipino American. And I think I, wa I wanted to highlight my like identity as a Filipino and really so pretty much the album is just this kind of like self exploration of like ethnic identity. And I, I'm not, I guess the album is not on some like trying to uh, 
be preachy about it. I just, it's kind of just like a, a diary of like me exploring my heritage and, and explore exploring my ethnic identity. And uh, yeah, I, I'm unpacking that pretty much. Well, gosh, I'm looking forward to the album. Really appreciate you taking time for the chat and best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was nice talking. Oh, 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 oh